This is the Valley Cast. Oh, they make it sunny. They bring the funny. Elliot, Joe, and Steve. Oh, they'll have a jolly time. Free as can be. These are the Valley Four. Oh, now sit back, listen, and enjoy the. Interesting note to end on. That was <laughs> very good. pleasant. Thank you. I think that ended on a minor instead of a major. Who, who did that? It's interesting. Who, who I don't that? know what that means even remotely. <laughs> it means a minor chord makes you, makes sad. you seem sad or confused, <laughs> mm-hmm. and a major chord is happy and and uh, satisfying. So whenever you hear a song that makes you kind of sad, there a lot of it is in minor chords. Cool. Yeah. Music. Hey guys, welcome to the Valley Cast. That Valley Cast intro. Uh, the New Year's special. I feel like I'm peaking, but uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, professionally. That Valley Cast <laughs> intro. <laughs> uh, no, that's what 2020 is for. <laughs> Was brought to us by Kent Ove Onda. Here, here. What's the Ove Kent. Onda you, on Kent? Kent. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say? Oh His my name God. is Kent so Ove Onda, and I said, "What's the Ove Onda on Kent? <laughs> What's the over under on Kent yeah. Ove Onda? What's the over under on Kent Ove Onda?" <laughs> he, and he says um, it was a short little intro submission for the podcast Valley Cast, and he has a thing written out here saying. I'm on a new account from last time as I decided to make my main account more anonymous and not post stuff with my name all over it. That's probably smart. But you remember me as the guy with If Peanut Butter Spoons Was a Sad Love Song. For those of you who like that one, you'll find a demo of my real songs on my SoundCloud profile. Um, I've wanted Uh, to record more intros, but I've simply not had time. Last time I made Steve sad, so I thought I'd do something more feel good. That's great. I love that last time you made me sad, and the ending of this song (laughs) made me sad. Um, It reminds me of the Ricky Montgomery guy that I listen to, which is like like the acoustic, poppy, pleasant sounding, Mm -hmm. sad music. Um, Which I like a lot. It's like, uh, it's my favorite. uh, Who's the guy that uh, stabbed himself to death? Elliot oh, Smith. Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith. Yeah. It's like taking the minor chord and creating a haunting atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And to do that at the end of something po- like positive and upbeat. Yeah, it was really interesting. Weird. Interesting. Yeah. But anyway, he says, hope you like it. Best regards, Kent. And guess what? We like it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I know Christmas is over, but right now it I is. I love playing Christmas music over a podcast. I mean, it still makes especially, sense. Especially, yeah. <laughs> especially after Christmas, everyone loves still hearing Christmas music. But you know, it's not. It's not it's Christmas over season, Christmas for us baby. yet. No. Yeah, I think you it have hasn't until even become Christmas for it's us. It's December twentieth today. Yeah, in recording, we're doing this early so that we can go enjoy a holiday break. Mm-hmm. And I want to brace s- for twenty twenty. I want to start a new trend where we still listen to Christmas music through January, just to see how people feel about that. You think that's a new trend? <laughs> well, ugh. oh, has it not Man, been? Come hang out. People at the still listen- They still listen to Christmas music. <laughs> Dude, that music tree's going to be up until March. Well, the tree, yeah, but what about the music? <laughs> yes. All right, I'm going to go into February. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be playing Christmas music during Valentine's. Did you get those new lights in your apartment? The, the recess lighting? Yes, I have recess That's lighting. That's nice. It's so nice. Dude, I look forward to seeing it. It changes or be everything. Or seeing the apartment for the first time. You put some new <laughs> you lights come in over? there? It's a dark, yeah, I'm inviting um, myself over. Yeah, the uh, it's a L- these LA apartments, nobody cares about this. They all they all do. these living rooms, and maybe it's not just uh, exclusive to LA, there's no lighting in them. Nothing. It's like you have to plug in a plant, a, a, a lamp lamps. in the corner, and another lamp in another yeah. corner, and a lamp's never enough. Lamps maybe that's decor, why there's, baby. They, d- they don't do it. Maybe so that's why there's so many lamp shops. Maybe. So there's so yeah. many apartments that just don't have but lighting dude, built out into of the blue. The manager was like, "We're putting recessed lighting <laughs> everywhere," and I was like, "Yes!" I was so happy. It was an early Christmas present, and it it changes my mood now. Having actual illumination in the apartment is I can't wait. Oh, it's wonderful. You need that. I think you need a lot of and light. I'm you know that what? With Christmas though? man, it's like a Christmas hug in my apartment That's right great. now. I don't know if it's like a big mood I'm in or what, but I really love a good cave, like a dark cave to just like chill in and hide in. I just like the choice. But but I but I mean the brightness brightness is always good obviously but I think I like a mix yeah that's oh and it's got the dimmer switch it's like super Ooh. Christmas present you guys it's either I oh, want bright nice. or dimmer switch is nice or nothing oh my god I love you ever find, do you, you ever go down to the very tippy bottom of a of a of a dimmer switch and Until just it see flickering dude and then yeah and then like what's up give what's me the, the threshold give me the dimmer like give what's me the, the dimmer. what's the dimmest dim on oh, your setting pretty, is it very it dim it's very dim is it like sexy dim yeah sexy dim. 
The, there's there is one dim that's sexy between dim. sexy dim and darkness, but that's like horribly annoying. Oh. Where it's like I can yeah. barely the see flick, you. It's, it's like turn it off or turn it on. It's the flicker that I cannot. There's hear. a little Ooh. bit. Yeah, that's that. You know what that good. is? What we're talking about? We're talking about Privilege. pre. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Pre movie starting, still in the trailers, lighting in a movie I hate theater. It. That's what that is. Though. Absolutely hate it. Vroom. It's kind of mm. turn the turn the lights off. I know it's totally for people that are like confused about where their fucking seats are. Even though every oh, you fucking theater your, in the planet has an illuminated yeah. thing, even the shitty ones <laughs> they have like the, the illuminated little placard that says what row it is, and especially the ones that are like assigned seating. I hate it. I my biggest pet, one of my biggest pet peeves is the fucking iPhone fla- or the phone flashlight in the movie theater when the movie's going and Dude, someone's looking for their oh, seat. I had, insane. I had that's somebody do that in person. the middle. It's an insane person. No, the middle of Jumanji yeah. 2. Like, they dropped <laughs> they dropped something on the floor and they were using their oh, light no, to figure it no, out no. and they weren't using their light right so they were hitting themselves with the light and their whole shadow from like Perfect. five rows back Perfect. was being illuminated onto the fucking screen. You know what's interesting? For it's, five minutes. It's totally Karen's. Heather loves her milk duds and she <laughs> wanted. She wants them all. She ate them right off the floor. It's Karen's that do that like it's definitely a lot of Karen's that do that that like turn their lights on in the fucking theater looking in their purse for their fucking jujubes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's also the Karens that like are the ones that go to the manager and complain to the manager about shit. It's so interesting to me. It's such an interesting thing that they're just they, there's just obliviousness. That's called self-involved. <laughs> yeah, it's just like an obliviousness. It's like the bubble, the bubble everybody talks about. It's mm-hmm. like everyone's in their little bubble. Whenever whenever yeah. someone's like in their car, it's like nothing else exists. It's just their car. It's them. Yep. And it's like everyone else is the problem. Um, in it's such a bummer. In conclusion, I fucking love recess lighting. I don't mean to get controversial, but that's it, man. Dude, I this is the it. last this about podcast lighting. of the year. I love like, it. there's not like we're gonna get real. I love it. Let's just make the whole podcast about recess lighting. Man, that would almost make it in my top three. Segway, you guys. This is <laughs> the Valley Folk top nine hashtag top nine of, top 2019. Nine of 2019. What are your thoughts of tra- on track lighting? Track lighting is good too, especially if it's like on a dimmer switch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the one. Mean? It's the ones where there's like a there's like a track and then there's like a bunch of lights. There's like lights attached to the track and then some of them are turned in different directions. Can be great. It's like, like in a patio, like patio lighting. It can be out there. It can be inside. Uh, where they string them. No patio light. No, this is like th- track lighting. Imagine is, is, like a, is a hard. It, a track. It's firm. like it's a, yeah. Just imagine these like <laughs> on the ground. I hear track. No, they're on the ceiling. Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not my jam. Yeah, With a lot of people switch, like it. it. Takes it to the next level, though. Track- I just, I just saw it in my head. Yeah, I like, I know. yeah. Yeah, recess lighting is classy. Track lighting is kind of fancy, and anything else is not good. Lamps, <laughs> not good. Sun, unless you got good lamps, I guess. But you need so many lamps, lamps to fill take a room. Up too much damn space. <laughs> <laughs> you really do to light up a whole room. Yeah, but then you got the lamps start, are like, all decor, man. They're not. It yeah, is decor. It's, yeah, and it makes you feel great, but like. Can you imagine sitting under a normal lamp and like reading a book? You wouldn't be able to see anything. No, mm-hmm. you should be straining your little it's eyes. It's like a, it's an accessory, mm-hmm. a lamp. Um, this is our top nine of 2019, folks. What do you think about the lights that people have? Where like they put red light around the rim of the TV or something, or like oh, blue light under know, the couch? So it oh, I love it. Makes, yes, I, like I do like that. I've I, seen it. I, I like it, but I've never had the urge to do it because you, you're like I'm gonna own. mess this up. I've seen it done right, <laughs> well, and I've seen it tired. done wrong. Really. I like it behind a TV, like makes it stand out the, from the wall a little I, bit more. Kind of cool. I, recently, I see that in apartment comp or apartment um, when I'm peeping tomming. Yeah, yeah, I see that in other people's apartments. Right, because well, yeah. you can see it; it's glowing. You know, it's mm-hmm. it attracts the yeah. eye. Well, I mean, and I like to look up right now because it's the twentieth. It, I like to look up and see how many Christmas trees are up, and that's oh, always that's fun. fun. But then on the way up, I see like oh, they they're have, asking they for it. The so guys, this I is have, uh, wait, wait, our top nine of twenty nineteen. Before it's our top ten of twenty twenty. <laughs> Before we move on, I have to say, I, I recently went to someone's house where they had one of those lights around the TV. That Name like, names. Uh, I will not. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter because it's not shit talk. It like really worked. Yeah, I yeah. like it. It was like a it was like an upper it was like a, a like a fancy version of it mm-hmm. where like anything on the screen it was connected to the lighting and would light up the room with whatever you're seeing on the screen. So the the color 
mirrored what was on the actual yeah, screen. Yeah, like we ended up watching, um, like Rihanna released this like clothing line, like this lingerie clothing line, and she did this like fashion show reveal for all of it, but it was like a crazy spectacle. That with, sounds like, like smut, Steve. It was like good. It was smut. really good. It was just like, and then there were cameos from all these like famous models and some some like actors and, uh, but but. It, Definitely check out some of it. Like maybe watch it with Grace, or maybe watch it with, like. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, should I watch it with Grace as well? Yeah, everyone watch it with Grace. Yeah, that's if fine. You we'll can. come over. Um, I uh, I was on my way out yesterday, and I was on a street, and I I freak out when I see corgis, and I was and yeah. I love tricolor ones, especially like the ones that are darker. And I looked down, and I was like, oh, I was like, that's a tr- that's a tricolor corgi, and then I was like, oh man, that looks like. Oh, it's just it's Brie. It was just all Brie and, and it was Riggs. Riggs like going around a corner, and I was like, "That's it." And she was like facing the other way. I was like, "You know when you know so." I'm like, "That's a that's that's Brie." That's and so Riggs. funny, yeah. but it, it didn't connect right away. No, nah, yeah, I my know. brain went corgi. Try color corgi. Oh, oh, I know that Riggs is so great. Riggs is a little a mix. She's a corgi terrier, but she's got the stumpy corgi legs. I just mm. retweeted something that was like corgi paws and it was like four different images of just like the yeah, close the up best. of corgi paws and it was just like I don't think I feel any I think this is the way to feel good you yeah. just look at that and uh, you corgi feel good paws. I follow corgi a lot paws. of corgis obviously on Instagram corgi they have paws to. are it's coming it's a, we're a cavalry we're a King Charles Cav house at my place oh, they're great Alana's they're all so obsessed sweet. with incredible they're dogs s- adorable they're like I. You, they just make you feel more loved than any other mm-hmm. dog I've said this before only dog I've ever been a part of it's like Accidental death in an animal hospital before that sucked. Yeah, it was a sweet. Puppy. It was a sweet little cat. And it was for a dental. But they did have... you take her cliff jumping? And you're like, it's fine. We're safe. It's not that far. You can swim. And then right, because yeah. it's supposed to be hydrotherapy. Well, statistically, yeah. So it works better for their little legs from higher up. Right, anyway, right, right. Um, I mean, no, it's, it's not that unsafe. Back she just didn't. She had those small legs. She couldn't clear the outcrop. Right. She... But they have heart problems. In case you're thinking. Yeah. Um, this is top nine of 2019. Um, do you guys top like nine? Top nine of 2019. Nine yeah, of, hashtag nine top nine. Top you know, nine. Top that's nine. the thing. You're top doing nine. three. I'm doing three. Elliot's doing three. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, thought we were, I was like, I don't have nine things. Well, so. no, we each t- <laughs> took three. And then, right, uh, right, right, but right. to kick it off, I, I would like to ask you guys, what are your opinions on utilizing Christmas lights after the holidays? Not in a festive way, but for uh, accentuation within. It depends if it's the a home. If it's a decor. hunter green wire. Yeah, uh, I don't. I'm against. No, no, that. nobody's gonna just hunt. Oh, hunter green wire, but what hunter about? green wire that connects like white lights. Yeah, but yeah. If it's hunter green, that then that means it has to go on like a bushes. Yeah, gotcha. but if it's that a white sense. That wire, sense. then yeah. it can blend in the wall, and I'm down for that. Okay, Steve, do you use? Uh, I have no strong opinion one way or the other. A lot of college. Do kids I do use that. them? Uh, Christmas lights in the house. Owen liked it. Owen liked doing it when we lived together. He he had we had like this big stand up piano, and he he put like Christmas lights on top of it. I love that. And uh, they're the white ones, though, not the multicolored ones. I was going to say, I don't think ones. you can use multicolored mm-hmm. year-round, but Pure you can use white. white. I don't really mind it. I don't I don't seek it out, and I don't, I don't like, need it. Mm-hmm. But if it, someone wanted to do it and set it up, I'd be fine with it, I think. As right. long as it doesn't disrupt. Well, I'm so picky about my right. my television screen. Like, if it's behind the TV, or if it's, like, behind me, and you can see it oh, in the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. That's no, a no-no. No. That's a no-go. That's a no-no-no. Bef- yeah, before we, uh, before we dive into the top nine of... Uh, our, our top nine of 2019. What do you guys ever get an urge to use black lights anymore? No, but I'm only for my come to spot it to or see to it. see yeah. it yeah. to see it in the like yeah right, right post act or like post post act both. Okay, so some of it's for cleanliness. Reasons. Yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm that I've covered all my ground. You know what? It's like we're old. We're old now. We've we've been around the the realm of black lights for a long time, and I still. If I walk into like a, oh, I go bowling. It's like, oh shit, it's cosmic bowling. Oh, I know, yeah. it's always fun. It's great. I, I still, cosmic bowling is. Yeah, I still get like, oh, oh, what part of me is glowing uh-huh. right Look now? at my teeth. And me and the kids will just be like, look at your laces. Look at my shirt. Yeah. At, it's so much Whoa, fun. Oh, my, my fingernails. This is crazy. Oh, Jackson, look over there. It's Steve's cum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen it. <laughs> Wow, that's revolting. Um, and you're a bad influence on that child's life. <laughs> Both of you. Um, yeah, that bit. this bit's gone long enough where we just keep talking about I'm lights. Well, soon we'll it. get to our top nine of 2019. Before, before that. Flashlights. Let's talk about uh, cosmic bowling. <laughs> Good times. Would Never you guys not. have, uh, if you guys had a little... Bowl, like, is there any world where you have it, disposable income to the point where you put like a little bowling room in your house or something? You know how people have. Well, if that? I had bowling room disposable income, 
Yeah. If you had bowling room disposable income, you'd have a bowling room? Yeah. Because if you have bowling room disposable income, you've got some hefty disposable well, income. I don't think you would add on a bowling room. No, no, it no. It wouldn't be your first. You that's what I'm saying. You would, would you have a house would you that's build big a enough bowling yeah. to have a if bowling I, Yeah. Room. I, what I'm I, saying is if you had bowling room money, would you add a bowling room to your home? Oh, look at that Not dude. first. He's bowling room rent. But Movie theater. Movie theater I would do. Movie theater 100%. That's the big one. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd ever put a bowling alley in my home. Home theaters, when you see pictures of those things and they're all decked out and they got the each person has their huge recliner. It's like this little stadium oh, seating. So it's, cool. It's, it's mm-hmm. wonderful to be in a home theater. It's yeah. just it's a very it's a very privileged thing. <laughs> I, I was I was actually uh seeing Well, it's like pre- straight up upper class. It's like, super upper class. Yeah, it's not... like it's yeah. I I went to go see 1917, the new war movie which is just like oh, fucking so absolutely incredible. See it so bad. Mind-blowing oh, shit. Don't even I don't even yeah, I haven't seen the thing, but Don't don't see I've a thing. Have you probably heard a little bit from us? Try to yeah, go yeah, to just it. don't but see don't anything. even look at a trailer or imagery. I want to know what that mm. would be like for you. But I went to the premiere, not to humble brag, but humble brag, and I took an Im- I took like a screenshot and then posted it on my Instagram. And Tony Revolori texted me back and was like, "I'm watching it in my friend's home theater right now." Oh, and I'm like, cool. oh, you motherfucker, I'm, I'm at the premiere. Who the fuck do you know that has a home theater <laughs> and has 1917? Maybe the premiere was in that guy's home theater and you just didn't realize <laughs> Tony, it. Tony, come say hi. <laughs> I'm also in this home theater called the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Uh, but yeah, man, that's a dream of mine to have a home theater, I think. Once, you know, we'll get to the top nine of 2019 real soon, but I really, really want. Uh, Do I love want the way the- makeup light lights work in makeup rooms, like in theaters, mm-hmm. and in the kind we have, where the it's just light bulbs all yeah. around the mirror. Yeah, that's nice. Very nice. That makes you feel like a classy act. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. oh, look at me. Covers mm-hmm. up your fluorescent lights. I'm not a fan of. I hate them. Nobody em. likes a fluorescent. Light. I hate them so much. Mm-hmm. I just like worked in a corporate job for way too long, and the fluorescent lights just suck my soul right out. That's what they do. Have you guys ever done the thing where you break them? Yes, it truly yeah. is very fun and also fun. scary, it's it's dangerous, and just feels it's very great. Dangerous. invigorating. Yeah, like the jackass guys used to just slam them mm-hmm. on each other all the time, and that was a. Whole... They're doing another movie. No yeah. way. And March I'm, of twenty twenty one. I am in. I, I never set a reminder on series. One of like, they're gonna die. One's yeah. gonna die. Is it is yeah. it everybody like Steve O? I think so. I mean, I Johnny imagine. Oxnell I'm I'm stuff. sure they're all just like, let's get a huge paycheck because it's gonna make so much money yeah. for spending no money. Yeah, and yeah. they're gonna they're gonna tug at the heartstrings. There's gonna be a Ryan Dunn montage in this thing that is going to you know destroy that? us. Can I? I uh, why wouldn't they do that? They're 100. percent Can I admit that. something to you guys that might come as a shock? You loved them. I've never seen any Jackass. Not even. Not really. Even a, I mean, maybe a clip. High five. <laughs> Were you? I've an- never. I never watched the movies. I never watched the show, dude. I are- remember the the way the thing I thought was cool about it was that the if you watch a whole episode, they like find a rhythm in the episode where the laughs like if you f- buy into it and you're not just like oh that's painful I don't like seeing people get hurt but if you like are drunk enough to be like this is hilarious and it's that very immature humor the way they can hit laughter the entire episode I remember yeah. laughing harder than I've like top 10 laughs of my life were yeah. watching Jackass as a kid in the theater uh, mm-hmm. in the theater yeah and uh, the first one I remember specifically being like just just one of the funniest things I'd ever mm-hmm. experienced. Yeah, I mean, I know I'm missing out on like some really funny shit for sure. I just, I guess I just like, I don't, I'm not super into real gross out stuff. Yeah, I don't like the gross out I stuff. Like, I like fake gross I get out pretty, stuff, pretty but done with that. real gross out is not my thing. I think mm-hmm. it's only like, 30% of their shtick though. That's the thing. Like I'd have to like not I'd have to like watch a version where it's edited out or something to enjoy it. There's there's only one or two that would really go over the top. But stop centering When artists. I was over at um <laughs> when I was over at Smosh and I was ushering in the new cast, like Shane and Olivia, Courtney, Noah, and Keith. I oh, you're always, the guy that did that. Yeah. Thank you're welcome. Or sorry. <laughs> um what happened with Anthony? Uh who? Anthony Padilla. What's, What's the, story? the story with Flitz? Who? Who's, what happened with Flitz? What? What's up with Ross? Why did Ross... Is Defy still doing it? <laughs> <laughs> they're all doing fine. Anthony just announced anyway, when his you new were, girlfriend, and they look like they're super happy, and I'm happy for When them. you were harboring uh, um, in... So when I'm bringing them in, like, I would talk about you know, being present. It's like we're used to like sitting on this couch now and, and doing what we do and knowing that it's for a, an audience and you're performing. But it's not a natural thing what we do. It's not act- absolutely it's not, not acting. It's some like amalgamation of mm-hmm. acting and being yourself. But it's then like a also, heightened version it's of It's weird, right? It's a heightened version of reality. 
and it's a it's a muscle that you have to build up and i would always talk to them about like the jackass factor the jackass factor jackass jack the jackass the jackass factor which is you want to present that like you're a bunch of friends having a good time and you're present and and that's what you're there for you're there for the fun and you make it seem like a party and that's what jackass did they brought you in to their friendship circle and you felt like you were laughing with them all the time. But their friendship circle was like incredibly different from any other friendship right. yeah. circle. But, but they welcomed you into it and it was fun. And here's the, the other point that I loved about them was they only did it to themselves. Like mm-hmm. the joke was always on it was each on other. Them. It was insular for the most part. It was very rare where they were ever doing it to somebody outside of their group and doing like mean pranks. Who was the guy that kept fucking with his parents and stuff? Bam. Was that, was that Bam. That's Bam. Jackass? Yeah, that was Jackass. Yeah. Because um, that's kind of that that stuff. But what was interesting too is they they got to a point because they'd worked together for so long that eventually they had to split ways a little bit, and then their audience freaked out and accused them of some of the most heinous things Whoa, that I they've ever. That. Yeah, they got on Twitter and they did like this Whoa. video that was like had all these bullet points that they thought was going to be like, you know, this like PR appropriate thing, going like we can't, you know, we're going to go separate ways. And then this, uh, the other person came out and was like, no, like they, they just completely Ugh, got rid of me. And then mess. they had to do a podcast where they like sat down. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't like yeah. what you're doing. And, <laughs> and then did they do one that they really liked, but everyone told them not to do that one? They didn't at times listen to their own feelings and yeah. their own guts. Um, and they did outsource their decision making yeah. a little bit. Um, but it, it was interesting because they, they were still able to bounce back. <laughs> Welcome to and, the uh, uh, Valley Folk. <laughs> Top nine of 2019. <laughs> Any second now, we'll get to the top nine of 2019. But before that, Do you guys like light food, <laughs> <laughs> like eating light bulbs, uh, yeah, like diet, which no, is something like Jackass would you do. You know, sometimes I prefer light food over heavy food. Yeah, like soup over yeah. a, over a sandwich, but a yeah. light soup, not a heavy yeah. soup. Well, yeah, like a light soup would be like a tomato or like a tomato bisque or not French too onion. Much, not maybe. too much texture. Mm-hmm. A French onion could be heavy though if there's a lot of cheese. For sure. I've always been a little afraid of a French onion soup. I just think it's too many onions in a French onion soup. I've never had a French onion soup where there was like a good ratio of onions. That's what they say about the French, man. Too many onions. Why don't we um, each pick a top of 2019 that we are going to talk about, and then we'll talk about it. Well, like Gloria. Okay, so yeah, category. We're all coming in with three things that are our favorite. We haven't talked things from 2019. It could be anything. It could be entertainment, movies, a personal thing, whatever. Did Um, you guys have a relationship with frogs when you were a kid? (laughs) Just kidding. No, I was I was against. You were against frogs. I remember as a kid saying something that I did not think was funny at the time, but now as an adult, I look back on it and I I respect the little kid version of me because I remember going, anything that small that can jump that high compared to how big it is, is bad and I don't want it around trusted. me. That's yeah, it shouldn't so be trusted. Funny. I think it was something like not be trusted. <laughs> and, were, uh, were there a lot of frogs in your... Yeah, it's Florida. And in, in, in Florida, there's mm. some frogs that are horrible. Like my parents' house is Racist on a lake. Frogs. And it might as well be. Super opinionated. Horrendous, like poison-covered things. Ooh. And they get everywhere. And so Ooh. we would go out fishing and we'd open up like a, a door to put our sunglasses in and there would just be this nasty-ass Big swamp bullfrog. thing. Yeah. Uh, and they, it was, they're disgusting. Interesting. And, uh, so you grew up around them, and they were more of like a, a nuisance than than a than a, like a nice that kind. And then a bunch of toads, a lot of toads. But toads are cool. Toads were always kind of gross. But toads are like the super shredder of frogs. I guess I was yeah. always into frogs, and I loved them so much because I was always frog. into bugs and weird creatures and things. And I, I would like pick up slugs and let them crawl on me and stuff when I was a kid. Like I really loved bugs and frogs and stuff. But like I grew up in a part of the world where there just weren't frogs. And I just never got to see yeah. them really, so I'm wondering if there's like a correlation, a correlation between too many frogs and no frogs, and that's what makes you kind of love them or hate them. Maybe mm-hmm. 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 I as Joe, yeah. I grew up around frogs. Yeah, I caught them. Pop Did you frogs. like them? Yeah, it's fine. It's you just love like, frogs. There's a little thing I'm gonna I'm gonna play with. Yeah, like wh- what's the biggest frog you ever handled? We didn't have the. They're not huge <laughs> up there. They're about uh, probably uh, probably a good four incher. A four incher, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, good Not a full, bullfrog. A good old full incher, full into a. That's nice. Not turtles. Yeah. Turtles. I do I remember like. hearing a lot of things about like don't touch that frog and get warts and shit. I think that's fucked up pee, to the frogs. They say I, don't pee on that, you. I don't think that's real. I don't know. Is that real? I have no idea. I heard the same thing. I always just assumed I, it was I think true. it's just your parents don't want you bringing a frog into the house or some shit. Don't touch it, you'll get warts. Like the part of me wants to just uh, like permanently say that's not real, like just adamantly be like, I know that's not real. But there's also part of me that's like, they're all why is it, things are. True. Guess People what? That things, doesn't make any sense. Things a wart are built out is of like truth. a wart doesn't go anywhere. You can't just sprout a wart. All right, I'm gonna find out definitively I mean, you can, right not now. From, not from frog urine. 
We don't know. It's not like fertilizer that activates Google the... Google it right now. Get ready, guys. Is it based in truth? Based on the Burke Museum from BurkeMuseum.org in the herpetology section. Mm, nice. All about amphibians. Definitively, no. Definitively. There yeah. are no amphibians that give you warts. This myth has been around for a long time and is probably related to the fact that many frogs and toads have warty looking bumps on their skin. Mm. These are glands and do not secrete anything that can cause you to have warts. Can you Google for me, can we give frogs herpes? Yes. Can you give <laughs> frogs herpes? It is rarely seen in the summer because the virus needs cold to herpes causing cancer and amphibians okay uh let's talk <laughs> how about this can go can frogs give you diseases now, how now about I'm that how about bored. that <laughs> turtles frogs iguanas snakes geckos horned toads salamanders and chameleons are colorful quiet and often kept as pets these animals frequently carry bacteria called salmonella that can cause serious illness in people incredible salmonella never heard of her 2019 <laughs> salmonella i barely okay. knew her number one i'll start um, one of my favorite moments from the last year. Thank you, Steve. Steve, you're taking Steve's drink. Um, yeah, have it. Was going to a concert at the Greek Theater with y'all. Yeah, we saw live. We saw Bush. We wait. Saw what is this? Your cat? What's the category? D d Just favorite things. Of favorite. I guess this cool. falls into experiential. Yeah. Is it category? Can we? Can it be categorized? Yeah. We just I think it's fun. You to can throw people. it into one. It might be hard to do that. Experiential or slash whatever music. Um. It was the first concert that I went to in a long time. My first time at the Greek Theater, which is an outside amphitheater, which are just the best ways to enjoy concerts. Um, yeah, the Greek Theater is wonderful. I've never been to the Greek Theater. Neither had I. Yeah. Uh, I love that that was both your first time. Live yeah, Bush. That's very nice. Uh, uh, that guy. Well, it was supposed to be Seven Mary Three. <laughs> that but guy that we, was with... We, um, I didn't see Seven Mary Three. Was it Seven Mary Three? The guy that was Live with Gwen Stefani. Well, that's, yeah, that's Gavin Bush. Rosso. Yeah, Gavin Rosso. Gavin Rosso. Was, oh, right, right, was right, it just right. those three? No, no. Mm -hmm. Bush. That was just... Anyways. It was Bush, Live, and and who else? Seven Mary Three is oh. that? Is that the name of it? No, um, no. I think Our Lady no. Peace. Our Lady, Our Lady Peace. Peace. Yes, but that we miss. I missed the Our Lady. So Peace. you all missed Our Lady Peace. So there was, and that was so. What, all the things that I said previously, it was going to a concert again for the first time in a long time. It had been a mm -hmm. while. Experiencing an amazing, like historic outdoor amphitheater, and in LA, and experiencing one of the cool things that LA offers, which I tend to not do, and um, experiencing concert culture again and mm -hmm. having watching people have fun and be jovial but like together. our age concert. and our age so it was a little yeah. bit more subdued which is also there's an ironic fun thing to that as well because uh -huh. there's so many people that were well, not even our age they're older like i would say that this concert it was an average skewed older yeah mm -hmm. um and uh, doing it with friends was also awesome. But the, when I was with Our Lady Peace, I was the only one who was there. I showed up on time. I sat in the seats. and But nobody else was there either. It wasn't that you guys were late. It was everybody in the theater was late. Mm -hmm. And it was just a spattering of no people. No I had known that they were playing that early. I would have been there early. They, dude, because like, it was a Thursday. I was okay with missing that. It was a Me Thursday too. in L.A. <laughs> I forgot to. I was going to say it. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, was, I think I planned that. But I did I planned like it that I do <laughs> like the, some you of the songs. You guys missed out. It was a Thursday I'm in sure. L.A. I'm sure. And I think where it is, it's kind of in a residential area, this theater. I do believe it's a concert's end at oh, yeah, this time, oh, no right. matter what. So they, they work you backwards. never go to a concert and they start on time. It never happens. No. They always drag it out. But it was like if this concert started at 5, they started at 5. Yeah, they that's were, how it felt. They were on the stage and they were playing. And there was barely anybody. Maybe 5% of the people that were going to be in these seats were in their seats. And I basically got a personal concert from them. <laughs> and it was really fun. And they were so appreciative. They were just like, thank you to all of you that showed up on time for this. Like It meant a lot to they them meant, because they... they're not they're not what they were before you know they're kind of a nostalgic touring mm -hmm. act and opening up for other bigger previous nostalgic acts and you know there's probably a hidden pride but they're doing what they love and it, it was great it was really fun and i enjoyed it so i had a moment for me just watching them while the sun was setting oh it was beautiful and then you guys showed up and we just had a good time and we beautiful. all sang freaking songs together from the 90s Dude, we yeah. live were remembered live rocked my dang socks yeah. off yeah, and i knew every song including some of their newer ones that i didn't know i knew and i yeah. was like this guy is just doing great he was the epitome of Ed what Kowalczyk a performer or whatever. Yeah, yeah. of what a performer um, is my oh. my brother is a married man of and a father of two children and he never does things really he's working and then he raises his children with his wife and so i ripped him away to come to the concert because i we grew up listening to that music and we really connected on our brother level listening mm -hmm. to live and 
uh, Bush and things like that. It was very of an era that my brother and I were, you know, connect very well connected, good friends, good brother, good times. Mm -hmm. And so um, he still to this day is like, I had such a fucking good time at that concert. He's like, I loved it. I loved everybody. Good. I had so much fun. Everybody was so nice. And he just still talks about it. Like, yeah, he had such a Grace and I time. still talk about it. Like, we had both of us were like, this is so much more fun than we it deserved to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we it, should we should try to do that like once a year. It was, or yeah. It was like age appropriately pleasant as well. Like none we of were us, done by like nine thirty. None yeah. of us got like obliterated or drank no, too much or anything. We didn't even like go that. out for a drink afterwards. Yeah. No, we were just done. We, we just, just went it, home and we slept. enjoyed the music. Oh, yeah. That it was, was nice. it was very good. Um uh, Great for, job, Steve. Great job finding thanks, that, yeah, uh, that concert. We yeah. met, we it's up, actually though. gotten me back into concerts. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We I, made a mistake, but it's because you know things started to oh, God. crumble a bit, but we were going to go to freaking Cake and Incubus because they were playing oh, a lot yeah. later. Well, we forgot to go. Yeah. Listen. And Ben Folds, too. Yeah. Remember? Oh, my God. Yeah, you got to let me know ah. next time that comes in. We got, you got to come because I'm for sure going to go to the Green Day Fall Out Boy Weezer, Oh, that's fun. Hell and Megator. Jesus. And that's yeah. fun. That's going to be bonkers, and it's a stadium tour, and that's going to be, I repeat, bonkers, gentlemen. Uh, that sounds like a great time. You I'd love come. to go. That's going to be so fun. I was telling my I was going to tell my wife I forgot, but like I don't I don't never know what to ask for Christmas and nobody ever knows what to get for me. So I was like, I finally know what I want. I told her yesterday. I was like, I don't need a, I need a new Nalgene bottle. A what? Nalgene bottle. And what I didn't say to her, which I wanted to follow it up with, was also the only gift you ever have to get me at some point. Is I just want some Foo Fighters tickets. I want to go to a Foo I Fighters. Know. I thought the same thing. I've been listening to That's Foo all Fighters I do. every day right now. I want to yeah. real kick with them. I just want to go to a Foo Fighters concert. I've been to one before, and it was awesome. It was a small, intimate theater, and it, it, I loved it. I just want to. They're arena rockers I was now. Front I want to see them one time. fucking rock an arena. I saw Dave Grohl perform with Tenacious D, drumming oh, with Tenacious that was D. Probably great. I saw him with Weezer. That was a great oh. show. And I saw Weezer open for Tenacious D once. Man. Oh, nice. Or maybe yeah. it was the other way around. Um, it might have been the other way around. Final point on this uh, number one of the top nine for 2019 from the Valley Folk for me is uh, lead singer of Live showed what a great performer is with energy and professionalism and an amazing singer still sounds the same positive energy positive new energy agey, just like and also shameless, new knows who he, who he, very self-reflective yep. of who he is at this age that he is at and who he's performing for gavin rosdale on the other hand did not know good to see him good to see him good it was a great show him. it was I mean, great but, show. But, <laughs> had a hoodie had his had his sleeves ripped off was humping an amp at I, one point. I mean, but he then jumped around in the but audience and stuff, and that was so He redeemed cool. <laughs> himself when he used that youthful energy at almost 60, I believe, when he ran up through the whole crowd. Yeah, he got and, the whole and place And did a going. lap. Yeah. And it's, a, it's not a small place. He did a lap, ran upstairs, hung off balconies, redeemed using that youthful energy, which was a little cringy mm -hmm. earlier in the concert. I mean, here's the thing. Welcome to the ad read portion of the Valley Cast, everybody. I got my dance workout mix from our music library, and the only rule for this set of ad reads is that you can't stop moving to the beat. This is a treat for all you watching the YouTube version. Here we go. Get the ad read. Between hitting the gym, eating cleaner, and learning a new skill, there's a lot of ways we can better ourselves in the new year. But I can't think of one that's more important than starting the year off tackling high interest credit card debt. That's right, my friends at Upstart.com are here to help. Upstart is the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Yeah! Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. I started doing it to the beat almost as if it was a song. Let's try that for the rest of it. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. Since just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if you accept your rate. It's soft if you don't, hard if you do. The best part? Once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day! That's insane. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash valleycast to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash valleycast. One more time. Upstart. 
facebook.com slash valleycast. Unhappy with your smile? Tired of feeling self-conscious in photos? Why not make this year your year and straighten your teeth with Candid? Candid delivers clear aligners directly to you and straightens your teeth for 65% less than braces. Unlike braces, Candid clear aligners are comfortable, removable, and totally invisible. So you can transform your smile without anyone noticing a thing except for that smile getting a little bit better and a little bit sexier. Plus, you never have to set foot in a doctor's office or waiting room. Your treatment is prescribed remotely by a licensed orthodontist. And Canada delivers everything you need right to your door. Here we go. New song, new workout steps. Unlike other companies, Candid only works with orthodontists, never general dentists. That means your treatment will be designed by an expert in tooth movement with 20 years of experience on average. If you're watching the, the video version of this, you're getting some body movement. <laughs> Looking ahead to wedding season or a special event with Candid, the average treatment length is just six months. What? And you'll start seeing results way before then. Learn more about Candid's process and get a complimentary 3D scan of teeth at, Candid's, at a Candid studio near you. It's the simplest, freest way to get started. Yeah. Now it's the call to action part. So are you ready to take the first step toward straighter teeth for a limited time? You can get started with 75 bucks off by using code valleycast at candidco.com slash valleycast. That's candidco.com slash valleycast. Use code valleycast for 75 bucks off at candidco.com slash valleycast. Code valleycast. Candidco.com slash valleycast code valleycast thank you candid i'll use you next time my daughter needs braces because the first time was super expensive and complicated onto the next ad read here we go drop the bass ah. quip makers of the quip electric toothbrush want you to know the one single discovery that matters most for your dental care it is simply this that you have to have good habits if you have good habits you are good. That means brushing for two minutes, twice a day, and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Quip makes that simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. The Quip floss dispenser comes with pre-marked string to help you use just enough. You don't want to be wasteful when it comes to your your mouth string, <laughs> your floss. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, what? So your routine is always right. So, join over three million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. That's bonkers, that's bonkers, everybody. Here's how I know it's good. We get, uh, they send us these products sometimes to try, and I got a Quip toothbrush, and then I got another one, after having the old one for a long time, and my wife stole it. Quip is so good, your wife will steal it. And if I didn't let her steal it, there would have been a fight. Quip is so good, it could destroy your marriage if you don't let your wife steal it. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Woo, end of the workout. So if you go to getquip.com slash valley right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash valley. Here we go. That's spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash valley. One more time. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash valley. Quip, the good habits company. It's a good habits company. It's a good habits company. Thank you for sticking with the ad reads. Dance it out. Fade it out. Yeah. Whoo. Thank you to our sponsors. Live was amazing and they killed it. But as soon as Bush came out, like the energy changed. Like people, like, you could tell that most people were there for Bush. Maybe. I don't know if I remember that. Part. I really felt that because it felt like it felt like there were even yeah. more people there for Bush than there were our, for Live. I f it felt like our group was a little. Uh, we left a little, a little early to amoeba. make sure we got we out. We leaned Bush yeah. or we leaned Live. Yeah, for, for sure. Bush. Yeah. Um, right. cool. Boom. There was mile number one. Nice.
Um, that's your number one. Not one of no, not no particular <laughs> I was like, order. Oh shit! I don't no, want. But it was a great yeah, this shouldn't be in this particular. Year. Yeah, it's just yeah. Um, I guess in 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 uh, continuing in the in the realm of of uh, experiential, Heights. I guess. Yeah, I. Uh, that's what mine's gonna be. So that's good. One of my Thank favorite God. experiences of 2019 was getting to go to Galaxy's Edge before it opened with a Disney cast member that was a fan of the Valley Folk and a fan yeah. of me and was like, come be in this special group of people to come see Galaxy's Edge before everybody else does. Once yeah. in a lifetime. Super once in a lifetime. And I and it was like before the strollers littered the whole place and before there were like, and really truly, I mean, not to be like a grump, but there were zero kids, which was an interesting experience. Not that kids ruin anything in some way, but I do I do feel like the stroller thing where you see them everywhere kind of takes you it away takes from, you away from just the, a little the bit of the theme. You got to really be into the theme of yes. something that was a love and a passion of yours for yes. thirty years to it's like a dream coming true. It was That's a super so dream come true. Because like, it's Disneyland and it's Star Wars and it's a Star Wars land. It's and it's just, like exclusive and, and it's early. Totally. And, and like, it's Zero crowds. I mean, it was still crowded because it was cast members and friends of cast members and stuff. But it was like probably the least crowded it will be for a very long time. And it was just such a special experience. And, you know, that was just wonderful. I got to bring Owen with me. And mm -hmm. Owen was like my, you know, if I could think of anybody else in my life that would Your appreciate Star Wars that girlfriend. as much as I could. Yeah. My Star Wars girlfriend. My Star Wars husband. Thank you. Yeah. Even though he's not really, <laughs> he wouldn't want to be called that probably. Do you he, do you feel like since having gone back several times that it's gotten better or worse? I or really, just sort of falling I, into its I, own. I love it. I love it unapologetically. I know How there are people. How long is the wait when you go to the Millennium Falcon? It could. It varies from like thirty to an really hour. Good. Not, but you haven't done like a 75, 90 minute no, wait? No, my my first ride through was a 15 minute wait because there wow. was nobody there. Yeah, that's and amazing. Then that, which was amazing. And then I got to, when I got to go back again for another preview, which I went back three times during the preview because of various friends and such, which I'm very lucky and very grateful for. Uh, every time it was like a 15 minute wait. That's and then, great. And then when I went with my mom and my family recently, my brother had ne my brother and his wife, my sister-in-law, his kids, my dad, my mom, and Alana, and my my whole family, other than me and Alana, had not been to Star Wars Land. So it was like a huge, I mean, I guess I could connect those two experiences if I could, if you'll allow it. But but just being able to experience that with my family and then experience it allow with it. Owen, and thank you, Elliot, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, but being able to experience, I mean, I just... There are people that are like Star Wars Land was a failure, and you know it's are there? stupid. And I've yet to hear yeah, that. Yeah, there's a lot of people. There were a lot of stupid articles that came out that were just like attendance was really low for the opening of Star Wars Land. It was really low for the opening of Disney as well. I mean, it's just one of Disney those things Land. where it's like people want to shit on things that people love, and it's like you know, I clicks, don't know. baby. And uh, but anyway, bottom line for me is is that such a wonderful experience getting to do that. I love it. The I love the Millennium of Falcon there ride. Is insane. It's, it's just. I, it doesn't change for me. I can yeah. go to that land and stay there all day. Mm -hmm. I know that there's not much to do right now until the new ride opens in January, which I can't fucking wait. But there's, I just, my brother was even like, all right, let's go to the other parts of Disneyland because, you know, the kids need to go on all the kid yeah. rides and shit. Well, that's the other nice uh, uh, vicarious aspect of that thing being built is that it's opened up the park. It opened up a new path, which helps with foot traffic. And there's yep. not this like dead corner in the park, and or actually dead dead end. It's not dead, but it got. There was just up nothing there. Yeah, and now all the other attractions aren't as loaded all the time, which is nice. So yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It 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 just it, it really does handle crowds in a way, yep. and especially when the new ride opens, it's just going to be like you can go to anywhere in the park probably because everybody's like, going to be up there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, my one of my favorite things about um. Uh, theme parks and specifically Disneyland and Disney World is the uh, maps and the way they just draw the I little know. miniature. They just make mm -hmm. animated 2D aerial versions of everything. It's just yeah. fun to look at. It's so cool. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I had a, I had a really good time, and that was that was one of my favorite moments of Hell yeah. of experiential moments. Experiential. Okay, mine would be similar, but not, but repeated. So it's not specific, but this in Dating Grace Palm Springs has become a very very. Uh, a wonderful, lovely place. Wow. Uh, Your reprieve destination. It's a reprieve. It's like 
we've just had really cool experiences the entire time and it's like this place that has become weirdly sacred and nice and refreshing and uh like we first went there um like in january and then right after that went back and it was like where i met like grace's brother and some of her family and uh his boyfriend and i was like this is and we were like watching the super bowl and like in the pool and like we went up this like lift and it was like when you went up the lift at palm springs it was snowing up there like in february but like down below Mm -hmm. it was like 75 degrees and sunny and then up in the hill or up in the mountain it was like straight up just white powder everywhere beautiful and uh yeah covering everything and just like inches and inches of snow and it was so cool slipping everywhere and like just that was like one of the most insane fun trips and then just going back every time has been like a it's become a weirdly addictive. you have um you guys have a reset button and i'm i'm envious of it like you guys it's uh, whether you're in la or anywhere it's easy to get stuck in your rut the monotony of the day-to-day and yeah it can be uninspiring and it can it can wear on your conscience <clears throat> you guys can get to get up and get out and go see yeah, something hitting new. hitting the reset and experience. Button. And that's nice. the reset button, and it's healthy. It's it's good, and I'm, I'm glad right. that you have it. Uh, you, well, you, you guys can come anytime. Yeah, we're not going to do that. I might do <laughs> that. Yeah, we'll do that. I might I want to take that lift. Last mm-hmm. time I was in Palm Springs, the lift is I amazing. Oh, Especially in January or February. If we can go then, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's. I didn't know. Like it's I went cool. up and It goes high going, as yeah, fuck. So high, it wobbles, it turns yeah. slowly the entire time. I, uh, I have a history with that lift. And when I was a child, my dad uh, took me and my brother, my mom and dad took my brother and I to the lift. Put you in it, in shut Palm the door, Springs. and left you forever. No, that probably would have been good. <laughs> that, probably, that would probably make me less of a wuss for things if he had done that. But he took us there. We went to Palm Springs. It was a wonderful trip. And then we get to the fucking thing, so we go up to the mountains and see all the snow. And we, maybe we keep saying lift. It's like a super gondola. It's like a, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a it's yeah. like a you yeah. They can bit of, get a bunch of people in there, and then it you looks go up like the a curling yeah. disc that you yeah. that is on, on wires. So, yeah. so anyway, mm-hmm. my dad took my family there, and my brother and I took one look at it, and we're like, we're not going in that. We're terrified of it. <laughs> and it was like this huge deal that my dad was like, Get this the is lift. the trip. We're going up the fucking thing. <laughs> and we were like, you're not going to have children anymore <laughs> if you make us do that. And we like fucking would not do it. We protested and wow. we wouldn't do it. And we didn't do it. And to this day, wow. I have not conquered that lift. Dude, I have Have a... you apologized for just ruining your dad's <laughs> The Dude, whole day. You just you just found out what this year's Father's Day present is. Yeah, <laughs> take my dad. Yeah, my dad, I mean, I, mean, Dude, I don't would, even know if he gave a shit about it. I honestly, bet it would mean so much to him. We'll but, see. Yeah, I think he'd rather go to the casinos out there. And be do like, both. Let's get let's let's have some shrimp cocktail like, and gamble a little bit. Yeah, just be like, and if this one, wasn't we, good enough, here's twenty dollars. Go have some fun, kid. Yeah, hey, he might like that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, be nice. You can close your eyes. Yeah, how long is that ride? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. It's like t- 10 minutes. That's yeah, not so bad, I guess. And you know, it goes like. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I know. So but it's like the heights thing, and it's like, you know. It's a little freaky. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But you can see, like, sometimes you can see goats and stuff on the hillside. That's you can nice. see, like, yeah, I like wildlife. That. And just, I love you that. know, just don't look at the weird clown that never stops smiling in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, I would go if that was. A, the oh, case. there's no corner. He's in the center. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> Front and center. And it doesn't matter what side of him you're on. You always see his face. Mm-hmm. And if he hits one button, it turns it into a gravitron, and you fly against the edge. <laughs> and your butt okay, hole, now your butt hole falls yeah. out. <laughs> no, I'm not going. All right. Uh, okay, so that's three. Uh, going on to number four. I feel like we should drop the 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 uh, theming yeah. part of it because I just don't know what else. What what else? I, I mean, there's no. To. I'm gonna, I'm not going to do that. The next one's entertainment. Okay, go me. ahead, buddy. What is it? Next one's entertainment. I went through like the movies and TV shows, and there's a lot that I love this year in video games. Uh, there's too many, but nothing like really stuck out as a singular thing that I thought like deserved to be on the list. But then I was like, you know what? I really have been enjoying more than I ever thought I would, and I was giving it a little bit of crap out of the gate. Disney Plus. I'm very, very happy with, from an entertainment standpoint, and how much like goodness it's been giving me already. Uh, it's a win for me. Yep, I get great Mandalorian. Choice. I get this Imagineering. I get all these things from when I was a kid that I get to now just not talk about with my children but share with them Mm -hmm. um the simpsons being on it even in their murdered state is still cool it's like it's (laughs) their butchered state i think it's uh what do you mean their butchered state did they like censor it altered some stuff it's just it's just um it i mean they didn't they didn't cut anything out no it's like but it's like a framing thing yeah oh it's weird yeah um but fixing it it'll be fixed by january or something yeah i think i think the, the the programming on it has been strong enough for me to enjoy it um 
I, I talked about how I started doing bouldering and stuff with Hayden. Oh, and look at that. Free solos on there and mm-hmm. all this National Geographic stuff. Oh, that's stuff. cool. And, like, there's just... Is she into... Is she getting into all that stuff? Yeah. Or? And it's... it's. I'm happy with it. It's it's provided me way more entertainment and warmth than I thought it would. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, that's great. Um, I... I, I agree. I feel like 2019 was a fucking knockout year for movies. And and yeah. I'm such a movie nerd. I just loved every I loved so much this year. There's just so many good fucking movies. I mean, it's hard to list them all, That's I what guess, I think. but I could <laughs> but I guess I could. I couldn't pick I could try. any singular movies. I mean, Jojo you know? Rabbit yeah. and um uh <laughs> fuck, pa- Parasite. Parasite, holy shit. Um, oh, yeah, fuck, fucking Parasite, holy shit. That movie was so good. You saw 1917, you love that. 1917, I guess I could look Knives up. Knives Out. Uh, yeah, of- Knives Out, fucking even Skywalker. and mm-hmm. um, Jesus, there's just so many fucking good movies this and year. And the TV was good, too. There was a lot of good television. I'm almost done with Watchmen now. I haven't seen and- Marriage Story. You guys watch Marriage Story yet? I'm not going to watch that. Oh, it's, you're not going to watch no, it? That just I'm, seems like one of those that's going to make me sad. It's going to make you sad, but I do want to watch really good acting. Yeah, that's what yeah. I want to see. I, I, when I want to watch good acting, I will put it on, but I'm good right now. Yeah, I don't foresee that being something I dive into, but it looks great. It's like this good generation's Kramer versus Kramer. Oh, I think we're, uh, Us wasn't great, <laughs> but Us was fine. It was fun. Good, cool. Yep, Once Upon yep. a Time in Hollywood. That came out this year. Yeah. yeah. I watched that recently. That was fun. I still yeah. haven't seen The Irishman. I hear Booksmart's real good. I haven't even seen that. Like Uncut the, Gems, has, I, I need to see it. Even the big like I'm excited about Uncut blockbuster yeah. stuff, Like I wasn't disappointed with The Avengers at all. I really enjoyed it. It was good. It was fun. Um, I guess I wasn't disappointed either. Yeah. I was pretty entertained. I liked. Uh, I still haven't seen Dolomite, which I really need to see. I'm hearing really good things. Irishman. Is this one of I your... Liked. Yeah. What's your top movie of 2019, if I may ask? If I don't you know. It's really hard to say. Uh, I'll wait. We got time. <laughs> I guess that's really hard Is to say. Is it JoJo? Man, I don't know. I don't know. I really loved Yesterday. A oh, lot. yeah. I haven't seen that the yet. The Beatles I need to see that. movie. And you haven't seen Cats yet. So you I haven't seen Cats know. yet. I'm seeing it tonight, <laughs> baby. I'm so excited. Uh, fuck, that's really hard. I guess, I mean, 1917 was just mind, huh? a spectacle of Would filmmaking. you rewatch it? Absolutely. Over and over and over again. In fact, I was talking to my friend who's like a huge war movie fan, and of course he already saw it at like a DGA screening or something. But uh, Your friend Steven. My friend Steven, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Steven Baldwin? Steel. Steven Baldwin, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steven Stills of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh He's a fantastic mentor. He taught me everything I know. That's but, amazing, man. Uh, but no, the, the um, so it's there's there's a, two versions being released of the movie, N- not many changes, but one is like a full frame, like fucking IMAX. It's not seventy millimeter, but it is like it fills an entire IMAX yeah, yeah. screen, and that's how I saw it. But there will be another version that's like widescreen that you could see in normal theaters or whatever. And I'm just like. As my as as it exists in IMAX theaters, I will need to see it over and over again. I think, wow. even though it's a very hard movie to watch because it's very, you know, the it's horrors horror, of man. war and war is very terrible and hell. Horrors, war is hell. They say, mm. uh, but uh, but it must be seen in IMAX. And the fact that it is in it will be in IMAX when it gets released. I just want to see it with there. I want to take everybody I can to see it. Cool. I want to take my family. I want to my, I want to see it with my brother. I want to see it with Alana. I want to see it with Owen. I want to see it with my friend Kit. I want to see it with you guys if I can. That's a lot of times. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would love to do to condense that to two or three showings maybe, but if I have to see it like six times, I think I'd be okay with it. Yeah. I I I just it's just inc- an incredible fucking film. Now that was your favorite time. film, but that's not your number Five I just on don't our list. know. What's your number five category? What? I'm transitioning on because we're gonna be here forever. My number five. What's your favorite thing? Well, that was. I mean, I. Oh, was movies gonna be one of your? Yeah, things that was it. Talk? Oh, okay. that was my thing. Yeah, that was just my, movies in general. Yeah, just it was a good year for movies. Was, yeah. Okay. I think great. I I saw Midsommar. very so many good movies this year. Midsommar yeah. Midsummer was Midsommar, fun. Midsummer, yeah. Midsummer, whatever. Joker. Yeah. Joker was cool. Yeah. I'll never watch that again, but it was cool. <laughs> Love the Joker. Yeah. I would watch it again with like family. And be like, yeah, watch how fun I'd this w- is. I'd watch it with family if they yeah. haven't seen it. I'd be like, let's watch it. Yeah. I mean, it's a good time. The word joke is in it. <laughs> it's comedy. Um, I would say top book 
So five, we're on number six, everybody. Uh, number six. That I've read. I did not do much reading this year. Gold for 2020. But uh, Audible is a great sponsor. Perhaps they're one on this episode. Who Probably knows? Not. Um, <laughs> we don't I, know. Uh, one nonfiction I really liked was um, Love's Executioner uh, by Irvin D. Ulome. And it's basically a series of like therapy sessions. And this guy talking oh. about, uh, anonymously talking about patients he's had. And it's really interesting That's if you're into like you unconscious stuff. That. Yeah, it's super interesting. And um, I read a book of his called When Nietzsche Wept, which is also a really good one. And it's like a fictionalized version of Freud and Nietzsche. And it's all fun if you're into that kind of stuff. And then scripted The Outsider by Stephen King is not a great book. And it's way too long. But I really, really enjoyed it because it was Stephen King doing Stephen Kingy type writing. And they're turning The Outsider, I guess, into like a HBO um, either miniseries or movie or something with um, oh. what's his name from Ozark uh, and oh Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman, yeah. Is that new Stephen King? Oh show? wait, yeah, yeah outsider, I yeah. saw that. And yeah. so I I oh, read that book. Yeah, well, I read the the book oh. and I loved. I really enjoyed the book, even though it's very flawed. Do but you think I'm very excited about the show watching will be it. Cool. Uh, yeah, oh. I, I watch any. I love Jason Bateman. And me too. That brings me to my top. My final entry. My top person of 2019 is Jason Bateman. Oh. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but I stand by it. Elaborate? I do, I don't have a reason, but I, I stand by it. I He's really very like rarely Jason. disappointing. Yeah, um, I trust him. <laughs> yeah, I I um, my favorite. I I'm read, done. Um, I did my three. Nice. Was that three? Well, wait, what, are you actually counting, Jason? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Uh, books that I read that I really enjoyed. I read Hank Green's book. Oh, how was it? Uh, it's fun. It's a great I read. read more, he man. just knows who his audience is and who he's talking to, and I, I feel like he was really pulling from the voices of the people that he's surrounded yeah. himself within um, you know our culture the online internet culture and a lot of it is commentary on that and the dangers of uh, swift rises to fame mm -hmm. yeah. and the pitfalls of that and how it can be good and how it can be bad but it's all wrapped up in a very fantastical sci-fi cool. element and he's about to release um, the, the follow up yeah I saw I'm that excited about. I love the titles that he's doing um, I admire those Green Brothers, and I, I'm also envious and jealous of their capabilities, and I don't understand how they do everything that they do. Yeah. Um, it's, they're outstanding. Just just to step back really quickly about things that came out in 2019, um, entertainment-wise, which is still part of my category, The Witcher comes out today. It's like out on Netflix now, and it's like all of it. And it, I saw the first episode, and, you and liked it's it, right? really fucking good. Cool. I'm so watch it. it. If you got Netflix, uh, check out The Witcher. It's like Game of Thrones. It fills the Game of Thrones hole, I'll but check it's out. so good. Um, bonus one. Can I do a bonus? That's Yeah, outside. do it, do it, do it. Top Instagram story. We talked about this before. Instagram story goes to Mike Buckley. Michael Buckley. Oh, he's so great. Uh, great Instagram story. And everyone should go follow. I love his n latest movement. His like his uh, <clears throat> fuck. I forgot what the hashtag is. Uh, bitch, wash your brain. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> He's so fucking good. Um, the other thing that I have been reading for a couple years now, and it, the Bible, the Bible. Good for I, you. It takes so long to get through. Um, it's. Have you read Saga at all? Have you, yes, you, I have, I haven't caught so, up. But so Saga is this graphic novel by uh, Brian K. Vaughn. Yeah, baby. Uh, it's like. The new Star Wars, but with like a little bit more fantasy in space. It's space, but it's fantasy in space and a little bit more adult themes, mm. uh, violence, sex, stuff like that. Class warfare. It's it's amazing. Um, it's kept me entertained for a long time. I'm sad that it's went on hiatus in the, this year and they're like not going to. Oh, but there's no way they're not going to stop. There's. Yes, they're taking like a year break or something like that to step away from it, do other projects, maybe refresh mm -hmm. their brains, and then they're going to finish out the series. But so I'm going to be awaiting that forever. But you guys, you've read it. You should catch up, I've, and you I, would yeah. love it, Elliot. I oh, really, really cool. do think you would. You should check it out. Are you uh, listening to it, or are you? No, it's a graphic novel. Oh, graphic yeah, novel. It's amazing. It's but so it's good, man. It's good. 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 The writing's amazing. The storytelling it, it tugs at the heartstrings. It's uh, it, there's a big. It's all based around at the end of the day, family. I hope yeah. they don't try to make that into like a movie series Somebody or something. Somebody I, hope they don't, I don't, I don't want to. I don't know if they could do it justice. That's what it's I'm insane. saying. I just don't want, I don't want it. What time stamp are we at? We are at 52.30. We're doing great. Do you, so is there a final? You yeah, have a final? my final. Um, I have a final also. thing that made me really, that I remember a lot and I, was important to me this year was I took, I pulled the Band-Aid and I finally took a trip for me, just for me. I went back to Montana on my own, no family. It wasn't for work. All of my trips are always work related, and it's it's you know uh, oh I get to see a city for a day, but I'm working 14 hours of those days, and maybe I get a dinner or something like that. 
I went to Montana for six days and I just like refreshed my soul. And I, it was just important. It was a self-care thing. It was a reconnection to my past thing. It was a bittersweet trip because I went back to, you know, my roots. And I realized that my roots are still dug into the ground there, but the things on the ground are different now. It's not necessarily the same place that I grew up in. I still love it, and I have a special place in my heart, and I love going there. But it's like another generation's town. Mm-hmm. It's... Uh, you know, I don't know the That's people. That's kind of how I feel when I go back to like Polk County. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is just a different. This isn't mine anymore. Mm-hmm. So it gave me this like sensation of, and I think it's good. It's like I've never really felt like LA is home. I still probably don't know if I do, but now I know that that's also probably not home right now either. So I'm kind of like floating in regards to that. But I think it's good to realize that. And if you if you know where you're at within the the space time of your existence, it's easier to make plans. Well, home so. is where the heart is, Joe. Where's or, your heart? Yeah. yeah. Where's your heart? Where is your heart? It's in my body. So is my body my home? Yeah. It is, it is your temple. I'm home. <laughs> and your body is a wonderland too. How and do you... Uh, I got to go sorry. explore outside and, and, and just be in nature again and, and run around by myself in the woods and go to Glacier Park. And I took pictures and I, when you're... I let the stresses of the world kind of evaporate for a couple of days and that's when creativity just comes back in and you don't even realize you're doing it. It's like, oh, this is something that inspires me. Uh, nice. I created up there mm-hmm. again, which was nice as well because I think it was during a time where it was pretty dark and not really creating. You went through some dark shit this year. Yeah. Every Darker year. than Norm. Press the reset button. Yeah. That's so yeah, nice, it was Joe. a great trip and I, I loved it and uh, like I said, the I said bittersweet, but it was still so sweet. I saw friends. I, I ate at new restaurants in my town. I saw the progress of my small little like blue collar town and how it's growing, and it was probably on like the cusp. There was a danger that it might not have grown and it could have fallen apart because a lot of factories closed down. It used mm-hmm. to be like a very industrious uh, little town, and all of those things went away. But they're finding a way to thrive, and this new generation is bringing in an enthusiasm and creating community and that that's inspiring. I see these people creating excitement behind being together and, and, and becoming Columbia falls like the new generation. And it's, it's nice. It's nice to see. That's very beautiful. Yeah. Good wow, for you, man. Joe, I love that. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. I got to do it again. It brings up a question that I have for all of us. What, uh, what are your, how do you feel about 2019? Uh, all in all <laughs> ups, downs, good, I bad. guess, I guess it, you know, it really kicked our ass in the end. But overall, I'd say a lot of wonderful things happened this year and a lot of sad things happened this year. But I guess I'm thankful that I have family and friends that, you know, are here for, for me. And, and I think we can all agree that we have that in our lives, which is a very wonderful thing. And, you know, I don't know. I guess it was just kind of like a... It just really kicked our ass in the end, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it just really kicked our it's ass in the end. Aftertaste, yeah. But I guess it overall there were just there were a lot of really cool things that happened this year. There were a lot of like really interesting, cool I mean, things. we did win a television show, which is pretty cool. I mean, we won obviously a television it's like show, yeah. weird to talk about because it's not easy to be like braggadocious or like proud of something because now it got weirdly like tainted in the aftermath of everything. But um yeah, I'm just not gonna do that. It's pretty freaking cool. Like that we Yeah, we I mean won, it's hard and to... it speaks to a lot of stuff that's very good. It's it. I can't. I can't find the peace in it yet. Mm-hmm. Like I can't settle on like. You know, I still bump into people that are like, "Congratulations, holy shit, that's such a big deal!" And then they can't wait to tell the person they're with that they're this guy won a TV show with his mm-hmm. friends and like. And it's really cool when you hear that, but it's just it was just such a hard thing in life. That's mm-hmm. uh, that's in the bittersweet moment for you right now. Yeah, it's just like all the feelings, all the stress, all the sadness, all the the anguish, the mental health stuff, mm-hmm. and just it's just hard to find a a pleasure in any of it, really. In terms of so negative sad. and positive, I definitely think all in all, if you were to calculate both sides, there's there was more negative during that time than positive. But the, one of the big positives is the fact that the community like did go like yeah. Which is the coolest part. Yeah, yeah. I mean... At, Even though it doesn't make up for all the other... At the end of the crazy. day, whatever the the journey was to get there, um, it was as hard just as it could be at times... Just a, we just yeah. carpooled sometimes. As difficult as it could be at times, um, and what it ended up being in the end, uh, 
which like you said tainted it a bit i'm still very proud of everything that was done on the stage there's nothing there there's nothing yeah like i don't think we didn't deserve to win i'm really happy with the product across the board and i'm proud i'm really proud Mm -hmm. of it well and i'm proud too just of the even the live streams and stuff and like the way that we like actually went for it i think is very rare we put everything into it like yeah yeah and and for for the four of us to be unabashedly um trying all while all while knowing it could we could a lose and then b it could be cringy and then also dealing with what we were dealing with internally um even amidst that we still just kept making entertaining crap even in the ancillary parts of the show where we yeah. were running out and stabbing me in the parking lot <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that was all very I'm cool I'm proud of all all of us all four of us I think I'll be able to one day look back on it and be proud and I mean I I am proud but it's just not the 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 overwhelming feeling it's like right heavy. now it's heavy it's just like I feel some shame and I feel some sadness and I feel, feel some shame well, just yeah, a little bit. Just just because of other it, other you things can kind of surrounding see it. Through it. The, yeah, the perspective of seeing how now it's been received has made it difficult. Well, but it's hard to be like, you know, so like have proudness be the overwhelming feeling. Yeah, because the, I'm not super proud of where where I was as a person, and I'm not super proud of you know maybe certain ways that we handled this or that. And I just think it's just such a surrounded, it's just such a, there's just such, there's so many heavier feelings, like you were saying, yes, the sadness, other than the happiness. The sadness is reverberating. Like, yeah. it's just still there. There's I louder. just hope, there's I just, still a layer I, of it. I feel yeah. like I will one day be able to be like, you know what, despite hardships and stresses behind the scenes and things like that, like, we all put our best feet forward and we all did it. And we won a TV show, and that's really cool. And even now, it feels good to say that out loud, which makes me feel like I'm just, you know, it's just going to be a little bit of time before I fully accept it. I think for all of us, yeah. yeah. I think I'm a little bit more, I'm consciously trying to get to a place of like, oh, that's amazing. But I keep going back to like, yeah, I think we were doing our best in every way, and cl- like creatively, ethically, with each other, with our significant others, like constantly, tr- like, and also trying to do it in a way that benefited the Valley folk. And I know, I just was, I just remember seeing how everything went during it and being like, okay, like I felt like our lanes were clear, so to speak. Yeah. And so that makes it easier to look back because that's where there's there's not any shame, but um, I do wish it could be something that's a little bit more joyfully. Yeah, I think 2019 in general, like all of it, like I, like I feel like that's a microcosm, at least for me. Personally, it really is. Of yeah. All of it, like a lot of, a <clears throat> lot of darkness, the political atmosphere, the culture, the the, mm-hmm. the climate change stuff, like all of it. Like there's just this permeating dark layer, so that doesn't help. That adds to the weight. But then you know, for me personally, it's it's an exercise in finding the light. Um, and in the in the darkness and there was some dark times it, my wife was in the hospital for a month and a half and i was out of commission and that's been something that we've been dealing with and health stuff even before that and work stuff it's but despite that you know there's i've taken steps forward with my relationship with my wife i've taken steps forward with the valley folk and i've taken steps forward with myself in dealing with the darkness and going to therapy and trying medication and and searching for the light as opposed to letting the darkness become all-encompassing and i think you have to do that and i think i've said it before to you guys i think adulting is uh dealing with all the shit that they don't prepare you for um when you're a kid they let you be a kid Mm -hmm. and then you wake up one day and you're like oh shit money bills death sickness sadness divorces you know, money bills, death all is my it. favorite. All TLC of that stuff, it, it becomes so heavy. And I think adulting is dealing with that shit without losing your mind and finding ways to appreciate the light. That's it. Yeah, you have to. You have to assign value to the small things. You yep. have to. And you and celebrate I mean, that's why them. I'm saying, like, when I look at 2019, I feel like, man, it really kicked our ass in the end. But, but you can't. You can't ignore that. Like, you know. You, if you have your health, if you have loved ones, if you have things that you that you accomplished this year that you're proud of, you have to celebrate those things. You have to let those things be your your defense against the darkness. You know, you really do. You just you, you because you can't live in that darkness. You just you can't. It just leaves you yeah. in that world, and you can't get out of it. 
Yeah. Um, it's also just like, I mean, we have the, I was thinking about the, like, the, we stress about the Valley folk and we go back and forth on everything and we like, you know, it's, we do this, this could go bad. We do this, this could go good, but it could also go bad. But then I was thinking like about, you know, we're talking about the Patreon and all that stuff. And I was like, this whole thing is just been like, it is, it was a gift to begin with. So it's like, it, I can't get too upset or too stressed out about the quote unquote business stuff because it's like, we, I don't think like two years ago, I wouldn't have thought I deserved this job or this, the relationship that I'm in or the experiences that I've had this year. So I can't get too, I think there's a lot of stuff to be very, very thankful for, but I also still feel more excited about 2020 than I did about, yeah, and I think deser- I about how 2019 has been. Like feeling like you deserve it. And that whole imposter syndrome thing is like a really hard, it's a hard balance, but you can't, you can't, you know, forget that you earned this you know we you did to you, a degree yeah you you but, put work into this too you know and 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 you're you are where you are because of what you do sure yeah and i have to remind myself of that too yeah because i get into the realm of like i'm just who to who little old me, right. which that and i have to like remember like oh yeah no there's a reason this is this has happened but yeah i think in the the processing things I'm trying to do the the Michael Buckley lean into gratitude, lean into you have to. how cool all this is yeah. because yeah, lean the, into Denver, lean into Denver, and Lena and, Dunham. Uh, and Lena Dunham and um, black lights and uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I kind of like on the same note, but to end because my I had my final thing, but it could be a whole thing, and I don't want to make it a whole thing really. But I do unless have it's to a positive say, thing, well, you it, have is to po- say it. it is a positive <laughs> thing. Yeah, <laughs> I just make wanted it the to, last thing because we need a number nine podcast. Oh, the last yeah, I just really wanted to say I wanted to give an an incredibly heart felt shout out to Alana because oh, that's sweet. Alana came into my life two years ago, almost two years now. I mean, well, she'd always been in my life to some capacity, but we started dating two years ago and she's just instantly brightened my life and been there for me in so many difficult times and, and really was All of just ours, this. I think. Yeah. I mean, she's it, been it, very nice throughout the year of such a, helpful, a good sounding board, wonderful, positive angel light beam woman. That's just full of joy and heart and love and, I just I can't even fathom her kindness and her warmth and 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 just her her strength to to be yeah, able to she handle can lift a lot. I mean, she's so strong. I I mean, she benches like three fifty. You know, crazy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, but she she just she's such a strong woman, and I am so inspired by her all the time. But the fact that she was able to handle her own stresses and problems, and and then my incredibly life-changing issues and problems this year and mental health issues and all of that and her just being this wonderful person that's just positive and there for me and i mean she just changed my life in such a positive Mm -hmm. way and helped me see so many more positive things in life that i was like really ignoring and not really like uh you know, just living in the dark stuff, you know, because it just overwhelms you and it's very difficult. She but brightened the points of light. That's great. She totally did. And she's just this beam of wonderful amazingness that I'm just so thankful for and grateful for. And yeah, so just shout out to Alana. For Three cheers for Alana. Alana. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! And not to sound like I'm piggybacking, but just to say... Um, Joe's wife, Heather, has looking like, a, first of all, snack this I mean, year. super snack. Yeah. Three C's. Really she looks um, great. She, I was telling her yesterday, yeah. I grabbed her butt, and I went, I like this. Right, right. S-N-A-C-C-C. And she was like, I got to go. I'm meeting Elliot for brunch. Yeah. I bit it, and she's like, don't do um, that. I'm on the toilet. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with us. We have a tour coming up in a few weeks. We're going to be uh, in Spokane, Tacoma, Spokane, Spokane. Tacoma uh, Denver, Salt Lake City, San Francisco for Sketchfest with the Chris and Paul show. You can get tickets in the links. Uh, links for tickets in the description down below. And uh, it's going to be a lot. And I, we're gonna book flights, and it's gonna be great, and it's gonna be an exhausting week. And we hope you come say hi to us, and uh, it's gonna be a very cool show. If you're rocking the comments right now, and you've made it this far, um, try to curate a top nine list for you this year. Let us know what uh, what was awesome for you, from from entertainment to person personal growth to anything. Yep. Yeah. Let Thanks, us know. Well, thank you. Thank uh, happy you. Happy New Year. Patreon.com slash the Valley Folk. We're gonna go for it in 2020, and we'll either succeed, and the uphill battle will be like, yeah, we did it, or we won't. The, so the official hey. uh, Valley Folk <laughs> New Year's resolution is to have. Have a 2021 resolution a year from now. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Thank you, guys. You're all great. And we'll catch you next time on the podcast. We'll be back. Yes, yes. Where's the cat? Where's the cat?